بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه بجهدهم كما هذا الدين رضي الله عنهم أجمعين ثم أما بعد In this session we're going to focus on a principle that's essential to the fiqh of da'wah to understand the da'wah it's a principle which I consider to be the essential of the essentials. The foundation of understanding da'wah and a successful da'wah approach rests on the idea of care and reform. Rest on the idea of care and reform. Care of the individual and reform of the individual takes priority over caring for the community and reformation of the community and its institutions. What's the basis of this concept? Well, here we're using two bases. The first basis is rooted in the understanding of the ulama and then we use that understanding also to get a grasp a proper grasp of the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that understanding that we have is that the ulama they say that fardul ayn ashrafu min fard al kifaya And to put it in a relevant translation, we thus say that the obligation which is upon the individual takes priority to the obligation that is addressed to the community because the individual obligation holds more weight. So when we compare the two, individual obligation versus collective obligation, we're focusing on individual obligation. Now the ulama, all of them don't agree with this position. Some of them say that the obligation, which is communal or collective, is to be given more weight and has more Weightiness and loftiness Than the obligation Which the individual undertakes Now that has its place Right The difference of the ulama here Benefits us in that In one situation We may take one opinion And in another situation We take another opinion At this stage of da'wah In this context which we are addressing We're talking about Guiding individuals in our community So then in this case We're talking about developing the individual So that the individual Is one that is able to uphold this principle To uphold the principle of undertaking the obligations right? They are obligated by Islam And becoming a strong mature Spiritually developed individual That is able to contribute in the community Now if we want to build the community We have two ways of looking at this Focus on the individual And focus on institution building So when it comes to building Masajid and educational centers To dealing with the needs of the poor and so on and so forth Then we say Fardul kifaya ashrafu Min fardul ayn So we benefit from the differences of the ulama We say that what is more honored and weighty and lofty Is the collective obligation So there's some obligations which are collective And some obligations which are individual right? Which are expected of everyone The obligation which is collective 
is fulfilled if a select group of people within the community undertake that. But the obligation, which is considered an obligation upon the individual, everyone has to abide by a commitment to uphold that command. So no one has an excuse not to practice. So salah is one of those type of obligations which everyone has to fulfill. But the building of the masajid is a collective obligation. The building of, 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 of educational institutions is, in, is a collective obligation. And when these obligations are not fulfilled, then it falls back on every individual. And they're not fulfilled by the collective. It falls back on every individual to make an effort to bring about, to materialize, to put into place that which is being commanded at the collective level. Again, the individual obligation is one which every person that is Muslim must fulfill. The collective obligation is suffices if a group from the believers from the practitioners undertake the responsibility, take it upon themselves to materialize, to bring into reality, to uphold this obligation. So for instance, everyone doesn't have to do da'wah at a particular level, but some people are commissioned to that regard. So then everyone is alleviated of that responsibility. Because the few undertake the responsibility and alleviate the collective. This is discussed with some depth in the text of Usul al-Fiqh. Right, so then this is an understanding that the ulama have. And again, we say that we know that there's differences of opinion among differences of opinion among the ulama regarding this issue. How is it to be understood? But we can benefit from it, right? So here we want to focus on the understanding that is there with many of the ulama that fardul ayn ashrafu min fardul kifaya. Ashrafu min fardul kifaya. So in this regard, we want to focus on the individual. If it's the case that individual obligations have priority over collective obligations, then what is it that we as a community need to do to ensure that the individual can fulfill his responsibility? We have to care for the individual. We have to focus on the individual within our community so that the individuals of our community come to a point at which they are mature in their understanding and practice of the deed. They're mature in their practice and understanding of the deed, that they're self-sufficient and they have the ability to contribute. Right. So then that the community leans upon the individual and the, com the individual is not taking down the community. If we're focusing on building community, then we talk about collective responsibility. But here we have a need to focus on the individual because many of our individuals haven't reached a level of maturity which will allow our community to progress and grow. So the person engaging in da'wah has to consider this reality. So we need to focus on what is easiest at this point because the politics of the community and the ill health of the community don't allow reform to take place at the collective level. Right. So we need to work with individuals so that they grow in their practice and understanding and become functional. Aristotle said that the human being is a social animal. And we find this reality also within the tradition of Islam within the source texts of Islam, the Quran and the Sunnah, and also in the writings of the ulama, which is the tradition of Islam. We find that the Quran emphasizes 
the collective iyaka na'budu it is you that we worship it is you that we worship so allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is singled out and the collective is left for the jama'a or for the group iyaka na'budu we single out allah tabaraka wa ta'ala wal asr inna al-insana lafi khusr illa alladhina amanu وعملوا. In Surah Al-Asr Those who believe Those who do good right? They're doing it together as a jama right? So We find How do that The concept of jama is there The concept of the collective is there But how do we grow into a mature collective Focus on the individual. Focus on the individual. It alleviates stress for the da'i. For the da'i, when he or she is able to focus on the individual, get result. When we move to the collective, it's a little more difficult. That's not to say that we don't deal with the collective. No, we're just talking about one principle, one aspect of da'wah. When we talk about dealing with the collective, then that's for it. A different discussion So if we want reform Then we look to reform ourselves To reform individuals right? This precedes collective reform That's the second part So we care we, We're caring for the individual And when we seek to reform We're looking to the individual What's the basis What's the basis for this understanding First we said that we built our understanding by reflecting on a principle of the ulama that individual obligations are more weighty and lofty than collective obligations. So who undertakes these obligations? It's the individual. So then we should focus on the growth of the individual. Right? That's just one perspective, but it's very beneficial. The second basis is the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. When we look at the lives of the companions, we see that early on in the early stage or the initial stage of Islam moving outside of the household of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, into the institution of Dar al Arqam, we find that what? We find that there was a focus on individuals. This was not necessarily a full blown community like we have today, in the sense that there was a masjid and practice was apparent to the people, was out in the open. No, these were individuals who were seeking to find their way. In a society in which they were in the absolute minority. Another thing is this. That in American society there's an emphasis on the individual. So we need to understand the context that we live in. We don't want to be destructive to the culture that's there. This is something that's integrated into the culture. Right? Individual rights. The right of the individual to express himself or herself. So there's an heavy, a heavy emphasis. Although we see that in Western culture, when we go back to someone as far as Aristotle, or Western civilization, or a father who's considered to be a father of Western civilization, there's an emphasis on the collective. Right? The individual is seen in light of the collective, the social animal. The individual man is the social animal. Because in the Greek state, the citizen was important the city state prided itself on the citizen and the citizen could not leave live could, the citizen could not live except with the city state and couldn't leave the city state and expect to live life itself was grounded in being a part of the collective but in american society even though we inherited greek civilization and so on and so forth there's a heavy emphasis on the individual. Right? Heavy emphasis on the individual. Even in Christianity itself, there's individual salvation. Right? Individual salvation. So the culture itself is that's where it's at. It's a focus on the individual. We have the iPhone, right? We had in the past MySpace. Right? There, there's a an emphasis on what you think, right? So we have to deal with the culture, with the custom, address the culture and the custom. 
So our people are affected by these realities. We're part of the society. Right? So in our community, it's important to focus on the individual and move beyond individualism to healthy collectivism. Not one in which the individual is lost in the community, but where the community benefits the individual, right? And the individual benefits the community. So we see then early on reform took place at the level of the individual and it was very effective, very effective. And the basis of that reform was beginning to understand the reality of the Quran, the character of the Quran for oneself, right? for oneself, for one's growth, for one's development, for one's purification, for one's edification. For one's elevation. And we find that some of the ulama tarbiyah and tazkiyah, some of the ulama they focus on personal growth and development, right? This is the key individual growth, individual growth. Focus on the education and the guidance of the individual. Many times we get lost in doubt, we get lost. We get lost because we want to focus on the national level. We want to focus on the institutional level. And what we find is that many individuals in the community are suffering. They don't find a place. They can't relate. There's no relatedness. right? There's no community. There's no communication. The communal is lost. Right? Community and the feeling of community is lost. They feel misunderstood, the individuals, so there's no ability to communicate what they're experiencing. And then when education is not taking place in a way which allows the individual to be functional in our society, the individual collapses upon oneself, upon himself or herself. And this is a problem in the Tao. So we want to focus on this principle of care and reform. As being a core element of Tao. It's not the whole of Tao, but it's a core element of Tao. Right? There are other, are other aspects of Tao to be found in the seed of the Prophet Muhammad when it is used as a model for understanding how to deal with people in society, how to grow spiritually, how to grow as a collective, how to benefit humanity. So the basis for this principle then is the understanding of the ulama that Al Furud Al Uyun. Ashrafu min furud al And we find in the seerah in the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, fi seerah al nabawiyya we find that there was focus on the individual. And when the individual reform took place, when they went to build the community which was alive, a community which had identity, you had individuals which were mature and whole, spiritually and intellectually. And they knew what it meant to build the community because they were prepared at the individual level to take on the sacrifice that it is. In other words, the ego was tamed. They understood responsibility. They understood commitment. They understood discipline. They understood spiritual discipline which came with understanding their obligations before Allah as individuals. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرَ لِي وَلَكُمْ والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا